We're going to look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. The title of my message this morning is Sowing Seed in Soil. That's like Sally and her seashells by the seashore. You know what I mean? (laughs) Sowing seed in soil. That's what we're talking about this morning. Out of Matthew chapter 13 and starting at verse number 3. Matthew 13 and verse 3. The Bible says, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now at this point, Jesus was ministering in the northern area of Israel, uh, around the Sea of Galilee. That region was called the Galilee region. And that's where he did most of his ministry upon this earth was in that northern section. He gave the parable here to multitudes of people. Uh, back in verse number two, it says a great multitude was, were gathered there. And, and so he gave this multitude, this multitude, this parable. But when he comes down to the explanation, he gives the explanation to his disciples. Go down to verse number 10. The Bible says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Now, I want you to understand, Jesus was speaking to a multitude. I don't know how much time had lapsed here, uh, but the disciples came to him. Maybe it was several moments, maybe a couple hours, maybe even the next day. The disciples came and said to him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And we read along here, and God uh, the Lord Jesus clarifies this and, and uh, tells them about this parable. The sower in this parable, I want you to know right off the bat here that the sower in this parable is the Lord Jesus himself. Go down to verse number 37 of Matthew chapter 13 here, where he says, He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. And the scriptures um, in various times called Jesus the Son of Man to point out his humanity. Yes, he was the Son of God, he was deity, but he is also the Son of Man, he was humanity. He was God in the flesh. And so he uh, wants them to understand this, that first of all, that sowing is a part of life. I'm not sitting there, uh, I'm not saying that sitting there Uh, mending uh, a pair of uh, a shirt or a pair of pants or something. Not that kind of sewing. Some of you ladies may have a sewing machine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about casting out the seed. Sewing, S-O-W, is a part of life. You think about it. We're always sewing something. All of us are an influence upon others. We have an influence on others. I mean, we see that a lot through the year in our church. People bring visitors. Why does a visitor come? Do you ever think, why does a visitor come to church? The highest percentage by far is because of a friend that brings them. An influence upon someone's life. You have an influence. Sometimes we sow good seed. Amen. As a Christian, we ought to sow good seed. Amen. But listen, as sinners, sometimes we sow bad seed. Amen? Come on, go ahead, admit it. It's good for you. Good for you. Yes. Sometimes we sow bad seed. We say the wrong thing at the wrong time. I know none of you ever did that, but I have. (laughs) You say the wrong words and you upset somebody. And, you know, my dad used to say to me, you are, if you've ever seen my dad, Just look at me and age me a few years, all right? My dad says, you are so much like me. 
He said, I, sometimes I get aggravated with you. Because, he said, I see in you some of the faults that I don't like in myself. Well, isn't that true about it? most any parent, right? You get kind of frustrated because you see them doing the same things that you don't like about yourself that you tried to change and tried to work on and it comes out in your children. Sometimes we sow bad seed, right? And boy, do our kids pick up on that. You know, they just do. They just, they just are aware. They just pick up on those things. Sometimes we sow bad seed. But we are always sowing. And whatever we sow, the Bible says, we are going to reap. Turn over with me to the book of Galatians for a moment. We'll come back to Matthew 13 in a second here. But go to that very familiar verse of Scripture, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It's a, it's a great verse. I memorized it many, many years ago. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. What does that mean? Uh, don't, listen, God is not telling a lie when he says you sow what you reap. Because he says here, For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Okay? So you're sowing seed. Make sure and try your best to always sow good seed. Don't sow the bad seed. It will come back to haunt you, that's for sure. Now, I'm going to get into my message. I only have two points to my message this morning. So I want you to stay with me and we'll hit these quickly. Number one, the parable of the sower. The parable here of the sower, the seed, and the soil. This is what the Bible's talking about. The sower. The sower, first of all, must possess seed. If he's going to go out and sow, he has to have some seed to sow. And so when he goes out to sow the seed or plant the seed, he needs to make sure that he plants plentifully. Amen? Plentifully. I have uh, behind where I live, kind of beside our house and goes around kind of behind our house is a big field. And that farmer that lives uh, next door on the other side of the field, he goes out there and I notice he plants. This year he planted corn. I don't like when he plants corn. That corn grows high, and when I sit on my back patio, I feel like I'm boxed in. I want to see out, you know. And so I, this time of the year, I'm like, would you cut that corn, you know. But he's not going to for a while. But I noticed about he's, he sows plentifully. I mean, those, those corn stalks are very close together. Why? Because he wants to reap a good crop, right? So we must sow plentifully and prayerfully. And when we give out the word of God, we've got to give it out plentifully. That's what we have done in this last year in our church, in our 60th anniversary. We have uh, 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 bound and put together those 15,000 John Romans. And we have given those out in our community. We are trying to sow the seed plentifully and prayerfully. We ought to be praying for those John Romans as they go out. That they will influence people and that they, through that printed word, it will speak to people's hearts. Hey folks, it's the word of God. What better seed could you sow than the word of God? Prayerfully and passionately and patiently. Hey, when you sow the seed, hey, the corn, the corn he put in the ground, that day he planted that seed. He didn't come out the next day to reap what he had planted. It has to grow. I remember looking out there over that field and pretty soon it started popping through the dirt, you know. My grandson, he got into, I guess probably in a science class or something, he got into this plant, you know, and he planted the seed. I, I don't remember what kind of plant it was, but boy, he was, he was into that. He planted that little seed in that little pot, you know, and uh, got it all ready and watered it and got a seed in. And the next morning got up and was like, Wow, I got it. And he looked at it. There's nothing. Why? Because it doesn't happen overnight. Amen? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't happen overnight. We sow the seed and then we need to be patient and wait for God to do his work. The seed the Bible talks about in verse number 19 of Matthew 13. Verse 19. Just look at the first part here. 
When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, that's what he calls it, the word of the kingdom, which is the word of God. We've heard the Bible in scripture called many things, the precepts of God, the testimonies of God, the word of God, but here it's called the word of the kingdom. Hey, listen, when Christ comes to set up his kingdom here on this earth, hey, we're still going to have this book. Amen. Amen. It's the seed. The seed is powerful. When we give it out, there is power with it. And it produces fruit. It is productive. The Bible, the Word of God, a powerful book. Before the Bible was kicked out of our schools, it was honored, read, promoted, and publicized. But now it is degraded, mocked, dishonored, and ignored. Just notice what this has done to our society. We now in our society see abuse, divorce, immorality, adultery, and shootings, and on and on and on as commonplace in our society today. Can we take notice as to what God's Word has accomplished in our nation? Even those who did not take the time to read it or hear it preached benefited by living in a country that acknowledged the power of God and His Word. But we don't have that anymore. The Bible's been kicked out. The Bible's been mocked and laughed at. It doesn't matter what people say about it or think about it. The Word of God still has the same power. It's never diluted its power. But we need to listen to what the Word of God says. That is the seed. This powerful seed... The Word of God will change people's lives. It'll make a saint out of the sinner, won't it? And only the Word of God will do that. It's the Bible, God's Word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And then we see the soil. What is the meaning of the soil? Go to verse 19 again. Chapter 13, verse 19. When anyone heareth the Word of the kingdom... And understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Do you know what the soil is? It's the hearts of people. Now the word of God needs to be put into people's hearts. But the Bible here in this illustration that Jesus is giving, this parable that he's giving, talks about the soil and the different things about the soil. I want you to notice as we read there in verse 19... That some of the soil is stubborn soil. He says that uh, anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. Then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in the heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. The stubborn heart that, you know, will not take it in. And listen, but not take it in as part of their own. And then there's the shallow soil. Verses 20 and 21. The Bible says, but he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and and anon with joy receiveth it, yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by he is offended. Isn't that true? Don't you see people with shallow hearts? They come to church. They acknowledge the word of God. They may even come to the altar. They may even accept Christ as Savior. They make a profession, but they don't have possession. You know what I'm saying? And they come for a little while, and pretty soon they just fade away. They don't stay faithful. They don't keep coming because they're shallow. Oh, yeah, it's, it's good for now. It's like, I, I, need a, I need a fix for this hurt that I'm in, put a little salve on it, and I leave. They're not, life has not changed. They're not faithful to the house of God. They just come for a little bit of a soothing, and they just walk away instead of being a changed person. The Bible calls this shallowness. Then the stifled, verse 22. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become unfruitful. This is the one that's stifled. It chokes. 
It chokes the Word of God out because I've got so many other things that I'm involved in and so busy. You know, that's one of the tricks of the devil today. It's one of the tricks of the devil. You know how, you, you, you know why the reason is that many folks are not here at church today? Because the devil has them busy at other things. Now I know sometimes people have to work and it's really a shame that that has to happen. I mean, really, they ought to be in the house of God. There was a time in, the country, in this country where you couldn't do much on Sunday because everybody was at church, you know? But we're not living in that kind of country anymore. I mean, to most people, Sunday's just another work day. I mean, when do you ever hear from God? When do you ever get a break? People talk about working six and seven days a week. You know what that'll do? That'll kill you. <laughs> It'll make you unhealthy. You can't do that. You need a break. Everybody needs a break, right? Everybody needs a time to come to the house of God and listen to the preaching of the Word of God and listen to music like we heard this morning and hear the testimonies we heard this morning and our hearts get blessed and moved. You know, some people never get any of that. I don't see how they survive. We need that. In order to survive, in order to make it, some are just choked out by the cares of this world. But in verse 23, thank God, some are submissive. The Bible says, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Not just you heard it, you understand it, you take it in. Which also beareth fruit... And bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. It bears fruit. If you take the word of God in, if you're reading the word of God every day, if you're coming to church and hearing it preached, you're taking in the word of God and it will cause an effect in your life. It'll cause you to be fruitful, the Bible says. The parable of the sower. Now I quickly want to finish my message with my second point, the, your duty in the parable. What is your duty in the parable? Well, let's look at the sower. Do you know, as God's people, it is our duty to be a sower. Jesus Christ, when he was here on this earth, was a sower. But his physical presence is not here anymore. When he ascended up into heaven, he told his disciples, now you're going to be the sower. And all of those that get saved and are born again, are sowers of the seed of the Word of God. It is our duty to be a sower. Christ was our example in this. And if we follow His example, we will also be sowers of the seed of the Word of God. Hey folks, if it's not your duty to do this, then whose is it? Whose is it? Oh, just the missionary or just the preacher? No, 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 no. It's every saved person who's part of the family of God, who has been born again. We have a responsibility and a debt that we owe to this world to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every ear needs to hear. The seed, again, it is the word of God. Hey, it is not our duty or our task to produce seed. God has given it to us, right? Right? And it's the best seed. But God, God has produced it. It is our duty and our job to make sure that we give it out. That we have the right seed that we're giving out. And give out the word of God. That's the ministry. That's what we're doing in a missions month. What are we doing? We're making sure that we're fulfilling our responsibility to God. Of giving out the seed which is the word of God. And then the soil. It is our duty to be good soil. What did I read there in Matthew chapter 13, verse 23? He that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. We are to read the word of God. We are to hear the word of God preached. And we are to study the word of God and memorize the word of God. Take it in our heart. Apply it to our lives. It is our duty to be good soil. Listen to God and do what God says to do. Obey Him. 
Folks, you can't do better in your life than to obey God. Listen to what God says and obey Him. And understand that God is calling people and God, wherever God guides, He provides. He'll take care of you. He'll take care of you. uh, Brother Hernandez said last year they launched out a deputation. I know we hear that and we don't think, but you know what that is? I mean, that's quitting your job that you have, not getting a paycheck anymore, and stepping out by faith to go to churches, present your ministry, and pray that some of those churches will help support you and take care of your family, take care of the traveling, provide the needs. It's by faith. It's all by faith. Hey, listen, when I have these missionaries come in, I don't get on the phone and say, well, how much do you charge to come to our church? Amen, Brother Jack, you know that. Brother Jack and Marine, they travel in ministry and they live by faith. They just trust God. They trust God. There's no guarantee when he comes here if I'm going to give him $5 or $500. He doesn't know. He just comes by faith. Sets up his display back there and, and, and presents the ministry and he lets God work on people's hearts. I know a lot about that. I grew up that way. We live by faith. And that's what faith promise is. It's living by faith and trusting God by faith. Let me ask you today, how much do you trust God by faith? Do you have faith in Him? It is our duty. We are responsible to give out the Word of God. Listen, when you are the sower, you cannot be responsible for the soil. I mean, you get what you get, right? Man, you know, nowadays, you know, you put fertilizer in and stuff like that, and you try to, but the soil is the soil. Hey, who made the dirt? God did. Amen? And so you have what you have. It seems like today that we, in our society, our, our soil, as it were, is becoming rockier and stonier and harder to get Get the seed in and get anything to grow. But it's not impossible because God can do the impossible. We trust Him by faith. And that's what faith promise is all about. I promise by faith, I'm going to give this amount of money to support missions around the world every week for the next year that God is going to provide my needs as I give to Him to support this ministry. When was the last time you did the job of a sower? Let me ask you, Christian. When's the last time you did the job of the sower? Are you putting out the seed? Every tract that you give out, every John Romans we give out is giving out the seed. Hey, Christian, are you giving out the seed? Hey, listen, if you're here today, let me ask you, are you good soil? Are you good soil? Are you taking it in? Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior. Let me me just say this to you. Take the Word of God in. Listen to what the Bible says. And trust Christ and be saved today. Do you know that there's no other way to get to heaven but through Jesus Christ, the Son of God? There's no other way. You can't get to heaven by your good works. You can't get to heaven by joining a church. You can't get to heaven by getting baptized in the baptistry. Those things will not save you. Only Jesus Christ can save your soul. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ is your Savior, we're going to give you an invitation to come and trust Christ and be saved. You can be saved today. You can receive the good seed and trust Christ and be born again today in this place.